Hello, I'm Anis Subedi, a graduate student at UZA and the presenting author for this poster titled Can Grazing Systems Affect Plant Available Nitrogen and Phosphorus? To begin with the introduction, a uh, large percentage of carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus that the cattle consume are returned back to the soil and the deposition and retention of such nutrients vary especially depending on the movement of the animals and conventional grazing management presents challenges with greater losses of such nutrients um, especially at um, underutilized portions of pastures, for example, uh, the cattle congregational sites. So, this study aims to develop grazing systems that can retain nutrients uh, deposited by the animals in the pastures, distribute the deposited nutrients to whole of the pastures, and make added nitrogen and phosphorus available to plants. So the objective was to compare a conventional grazing system that was during baseline in 2015 after two years of continuous grazing with hay distribution CSD and strategic grazing STR for the effects on loss of emission carbon, inorganic nitrogen, the sum of nitrate and ammonium, malic phosphorus, and bulk density. STR grazing management includes excluding and overseeding erosion vulnerable landscape positions and lure management of grazing cattle using movable for, uh, equipages like hay, water, and shade. So if you look at figure one, it shows uh, the eight study pastures uh, that were selected for this study. Four of them were eaten in that zone in figure A, while, while the four, the other four were at Watkinsville, as shown in figure B. So we sampled these uh, pastures on a 50 meter grid in 2015 as baseline, uh, as represented by the dots on the maps. And we started the grazing treatments in 2016, and the sample, the pastures were um, sampled again in 2018 as the post treatment. Table 1 shows the eight pastures with their respective area, the grazing treatments allocated, and the number of sampling points in 2015 and 2018. And now to move on with the results, figure 2 shows uh, the weather conditions um, between the years 2015 and 2018 at two locations uh, in the steady pastures. So during the steady period, uh, the steady pastures experienced some extreme events, including an extensive drought in 2016, uh, followed by wet years 2017 and 2018 with some extreme precipitation events, including Hurricane Irma. So as a result, we had overall reduction in alloy carbon from 2015 to 2018 in both of the treatments, uh, but we had greater availability of um, uh, phosphorus and nitrogen for the plants in the 0 to 5 centimeter soil layer. Uh, so as seen in figure 3, where on the figure on the left, we have malic one phosphorus in the y-axis. In the figure in the middle, we have inorganic nitrogen, which is the sum of nitrate and ammonium uh, on the y-axis. And in the figure on the right, we have loss of emission carbon uh, on the y-axis. And these are all the results for 0 to 5 cm soil depth. And the black bars represent the year 2015, whereas the red bars represent the year 2018. So we had uh, 5.6 times um, greater available nitrogen in GSD pastures and 5.8 times greater available N in STR pastures in the post-treatment compared to baseline and similarly the available P increased by 6.1 times in GSD pastures and 4.9 times in STR pastures. In addition to that we also saw significant reduction in bulk density at the 5 to 10 centimeter soil depth where the restricted uh, bulk density values of greater than 1.6 reduced to less than 1.45 grams per centimeter cube, suggesting greater water body infiltration um, and possibly microbial activity as well. So in the figure we have bulk density values on the y-axis in figure 4 um, and we have the different grazing managements and years on the x-axis. Uh, now the dark bars represent uh, year 2015 and the red bars represent the year 2018 and the figure on the left is for the 0 to 5 centimeter soil depth whereas the figure on the right is for the 5 to 10 centimeter soil depth. Um, so with uh, these uh, changes, uh, um, uh, we can conclude that uh, cattle grazing uh, systems, uh, improved cattle grazing systems can increase um, nitrogen and phosphorus availability of these soils, uh, thus uh, suggesting greater forest availability and returns uh, for the farmers, and similarly decreased compaction and greater water infiltration and possibly microbial activity. Um, which this speculation is further supported by uh, greater uh, emissions of uh, carbon dioxide and increased in um, the levile forms of carbon in 2018 compared to 2015 from the same pastures as reported by Dahal et al. 
so greater um, uh, greater labile carbon uh, to the depth of 20 centimeters suggests vertically downward movement of carbon into the soil profile suggesting lower losses to the atmosphere so in conclusion uh, we can say that cattle manure and money nutrients which was otherwise wasted in poor grazing management was now converted into significant worth using the better grazing management like CSD and STR. Um, here are some pictures uh, from the study pastures showing good amount of carbon uh, on the surface in picture one in STR pastures sampled in 2018 and some positive changes by the exclusions. Um, thank you for your time and patience.